Dr. Ted Naiman, glucose overwhelms mitochondria and they will not burn fat. This concept of metabolic flexibility goes all the way down to the mitochondrial level. So here's your mitochondria with the two inputs, glucose and fat. And a, a healthy mitochondria can easily flex back and forth, glucose, fat, glucose, fat. But if you have an inflexible mitochondria, you know, one of these damaged mitochondria, it's really bad at doing that. It really struggles. What's going on inside your mitochondria is you've got glucose and long chain fatty acids, the two input into the cell, right? Glucose and fat. Glucose goes into the mitochondria, and when you dump in a bunch of extra glucose, you have increased citrate, and citrate gets exported to the cell, and because there's extra citrate, your body knows it's time to make fat instead of burning fat. So your cell's gonna make fat, it converts it into malonyl-CoA, that literally blocks carnitine polymyltransferase 1, CPT1, and fat actually physically cannot enter your mitochondria to be burned when melanol-CoA is elevated. In other words, when you're making fat, you don't want to burn fat. That would be wasteful. So all your fat gets rerouted as triglycerides to be stored. Here's another illustration of the same thing. You dump in a bunch of glucose, you export citrate, melanol-CoA, first committed step to making fat. So you don't want to burn fat and you block entry of fat into the mitochondria and all your fat accumulates as triglycerides to be exported and stored. What's really going on here is your body is way too efficient to make fat and burn fat at the same time. So when you dump a bunch of glucose into your cell, your body knows it's going to make fat, right? Fatty acid synthesis. And malonyl-CoA as the first committed step to fatty acid synthesis blocks CPT1. Because you don't want to be making fat on one side here on the right and then burning fat on the other side. That just, that would be a futile cycle, right? That your body's not going to do that. That's why glucose and fat are burned reciprocally all the way down at your mitochondrial level. Because when you're burning glucose and you're going to be making fat, you don't want to be burning fat. We've proven that this happens. Here's a brilliant study that literally proves this. They um, measured oxidation <clears throat> of glucose and fat in the mitochondria at baseline. They infused people with glucose and insulin, and bam, immediately, glucose oxidation goes way up, fat oxidation goes way down. This is just how it works. This is why if you eat carbs all day long, you're not burning fat, any fat at all. Um, Rather, the intracellular availability of glucose, not fatty acids, is the prime determinant of the substrate mix, i.e. glucose versus fat, that is oxidized for energy. In other words, you dump in glucose, you literally have to burn glucose, not fat. That's just how the whole system works. Um, here's a cuter picture of it, right? Insulin binds to the cell up in the upper left-hand corner. The GLUT4 transporter goes to the surface, glucose comes in, it's converted to malonyl-CoA because you're going to turn it into fat, so that blocks CPT1 so you don't burn any fat and then all your fat accumulates there in yellow. And in fact, what happens is your cell sees what's going on here, all this fat is accumulating, and the accumulated fat shuts off insulin signaling, so the GLUT4 transporter goes back inside the cell, and your cell's refusing glucose, right? Your cell doesn't want any more glucose. Look at all this fat that accumulated. Your cell doesn't want glucose, right? Your cell's smarter than you are. Um, what could you do with your diet when your cell doesn't want more glucose? Uh, I can't think of anything, but that's probably something. Metabolic flexibility goes down to the mitochondrial level. Mitochondria have two inputs, glucose and fat. Healthy ones can easily flex back and forth. When you have these two inputs, glucose and fat, and there is excess glucose going in, this produces citrate. This extra citrate tells the body, time to make fat. It converts into melanocoA, which blocks the CTP1. So fat can't enter the mitochondria to be burned. When you make fat, your body simply won't burn fat. Fat is rerouted as triglycerides to be stored. You dump in all this glucose, you export citrate, creates melanocoA. This blocks the entry of fat into the cell, so fat accumulates as triglycerides to be stored. You don't want to be making fat on one side and burning fat on the other. That would be a futile cycle. In a study cited by Dr. Naiman, 
They measured the oxidation of glucose and fat in the mitochondria. They infused the participants with glucose and insulin. The glucose oxidation went up. Fat oxidation went down. Dr. Naiman says, this is why when you eat carbs all day long, you are not burning body fat. He quotes from that same study. The availability of glucose, not fat, is the main determinant of the substrate, either fat or glucose. You dump in glucose, you have to burn glucose. Insulin binds to the cell. GLUT4 transporter goes to the surface, brings the glucose in, converted to melanol CoA, blocks the CTP1. So there's no fat burning. The accumulated fat shuts off the insulin signaling. GLUT4 goes back into the cell. Your cell is smarter than you. It knows you cannot continue to eat glucose and expect to burn fat. Annotated and summarized. Easy to share with loved ones. The description below the title for this video has these summary points.